If you're tired of these promos, supporters get the podcast early and ad-free. Just go to donate.bogosity.tv for the links to sign up. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of September 10, 2023. The podcast that drove a Tesla off a cliff. This is your host, Shane Killian. Let's be law the news of the bogus. Earlier, we covered the lawsuit from doctors saying the FDA overstepped its authority by issuing a prohibition against the prescription of ivermectin. The FDA had pushed for a dismissal, but a three-judge panel of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has said the lawsuit can go forward. The FDA's vitriolic campaign against the drug, which included a tweet telling everyone to, quote, stop it said the drug was for horses and cows, and ignored the fact that it has been prescribed for humans completely safely for decades. Writing the decision for the panel, Judge Don Willett wrote, FDA is not a physician. It has authority to inform, announce, and apprise, but not to endorse, denounce, or advise. The doctors have plausibly alleged that FDA's posts fell on the wrong side of the line between telling about and telling to. The plaintiffs in the lawsuit include doctors whose reputations were trashed by the FDA's campaign, including one who lost admitting privileges at a hospital and one who lost his position at a medical school in a hospital. U.S. District Judge Jeffrey Vincent Brown had dismissed the lawsuit under the horrible concept of sovereign immunity, which dates back from the days when the king was seen to have been established by God and therefore was completely incapable of committing a legal wrong. It's exactly that sort of thing the founders wrote the Constitution to go against. But then, the authoritarian federal courts decided to just recreate it out of whole cloth based on no legal background or justification whatsoever. The Supreme Court ruled in Price v. United States, quote, It is an axiom of our jurisprudence. The government is not liable to suit unless it consents thereto, and its liability in suit cannot be extended beyond the plain language of the statute authorizing it. Great scam if you can get in on it. But at least they carved out an exception where it didn't apply if the government acted outside its authority, known as ultra vires. And that's what they found here. Will it wrote. FDA can inform, but it has identified no authority allowing it to recommend consumers stop taking medicine. The doctors can therefore use the APA to assert their ultra vires challenge to the officials' actions and to overcome the sovereign immunity that would otherwise protect the agencies. FDA argues that the posts are informational statements that cannot qualify as rules because they do not direct consumers or anyone else to do or refrain from doing anything. We are not convinced. As discussed above, each of the posts contains imperative elements that go beyond mere factual communication. FDA also argues that the posts cannot be rules because they do not prescribe policy. Again, we disagree. FDA concedes that the posts generally recommend that consumers not take ivermectin to prevent or treat COVID-19. For purposes of determining non-final agency action, we do not see any daylight between an agency that uses imperative language in recommending a general course of action and an agency that uses imperative language in prescribing a policy. Even tweet-sized doses of personalized medical advice are beyond FDA's statutory authority. And it's an ongoing problem, because many pharmacies are still continuing to refuse to fill ivermectin prescriptions. Dr. Mary Talley Bowden of the Coalition for Health Freedom said, quote, This needs to come to an end. In telling my patients what medicines they can and cannot have access to, we effectively have a large group of pharmacists practicing medicine without a license. They have no accountability for this, yet they are allowed to dictate patient care. I see it every single day. Enough is enough. While the FDA never approved ivermectin for the treatment of COVID, that's completely irrelevant since, as we've covered before, most drugs on the market are prescribed for diseases other than the ones they were approved for, which is called repositioning. 
Even the FDA in court said, quote, FDA explicitly recognizes that doctors do have the authority to prescribe ivermectin to treat COVID. The FDA has also been walking back its rhetoric this year, including just a couple of weeks ago when it said, quote, Healthcare professionals generally may choose to prescribe an approved human drug for an unapproved use when they judge that the unapproved use is medically appropriate for an individual patient. But according to Bowden, quote, It's hard to believe, but pharmacists are still blocking these potentially life-saving medications. The pharmacist didn't talk to the patient and won't know if the patient lives or dies, yet had control of his care. It's an outrage. I would have thought we were beyond this, but it continues to happen. Pharmacists are not supposed to second-guess doctors. They are not diagnosticians. They do not examine patients. The most they're supposed to do if they see something that doesn't look right is call the doctor's office for verification. But sadly, it's not the first time we've seen it. Equally bad and unconstitutional orders from the FDA and the CDC resulted in a lot of pain patients being denied the medicine their doctors prescribed them. All of this is what goes wrong when authoritarianism contaminates science and medicine. Never forget that. This new article in the Hacker News is very timely, not only with our previous coverage of AI lawsuits, but in line of this week's Idiot Extraordinaire. We'll get there. But it's a good overview of the myths and hype around AI. It's meant to educate businesses on how they should approach incorporating AI into their business model, but it's a good read for everyone. Especially since we're inundated with fear-mongering about how self-driving cars will kill children and generative AI will destroy the livelihood of artists. Some even going so far as to predict Armageddon stemming from the rise of the machines. The first one they cover is artificial intelligence versus machine learning. They're two different things, or more accurately, ML is a subset of AI. AI is about making intelligence in the form of cognition capable of replicating human actions, whereas ML is about learning lessons from past events and utilizing that learning against novel problems, often faster than humans can, without tiring or other human problems. They talk about something we've covered before, a narrow versus general AI. General AI is what people are thinking of in terms of the robot overlords taking over. But this just isn't the way it's developing. We're making narrow AI tailored to specific tasks like vacuuming floors, driving cars, or securing a network from attack. We've talked a lot about generative AI. Examples of this include ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, and Dolly, the ones that make people shriek piracy and the computers are ripping off their art. Of course, this works through what AI experts call hallucinating, which means you need to do a lot of double-checking. If you're a lawyer and wanted to help you find case law to support your claims, don't just take its word for it. We covered what happened when a lawyer used ChatGPT to write legal briefs, and it made up completely fictional cases which the lawyer didn't even check before submitting it to court. The judge was not amused. Of course, while most of the fear-mongering is bogus, there are legitimate concerns. People can use it to write phishing emails, for example. Before, one of the ways to detect a scam email was spelling mistakes in bad English. But now, ChatGPT will happily write your scam email with perfect grammar. Another model of AI is unsupervised learning. This is when the AI grabs data without any human intervention, labeling, or curation to learn about everything it can. Think about retail websites making guesses about what you'd like to purchase based on your past purchases and searches. Of course, a lot of times it gets it wrong, so when that really matters, you might want to switch to supervised learning. Humans would curate the input and study the output for any biases like the facial recognition systems that work fairly well on white people, but have all sorts of false positives with people of darker complexion. In between the two, you have reinforcement learning, which you can use when existing training fails with certain use cases. A good example is the recent live stream on Twitter X, when Elon Musk took the latest version of Tesla's full self-driving for a test spin. 
In the 50 minutes the car drove around downtown Palo Alto, he only had to intervene once, when the car tried to run a red light because the light in the left turn lane next to it turned green. Musk explained that the solution is to find cases like that where drivers properly stayed put and feed those into the training data. A lot of this is going to be the typical back and forth, such as between cybersecurity professionals and cyber criminals. ChatGPT, for example, can both help someone write malware and help detect it, or detect the security flaws to begin with so the malware won't work. AI is already affecting your life, for better or for worse. It's something you're going to have to understand so you can utilize it, protect against other people misusing it against you, and most importantly, avoid falling for the fear mongering around it. If you're looking for a way to support this channel, but you don't have any spare cash and you can't stand ads, you can do so by generating your own cryptocurrency. Use the links at the bottom of the description to follow the link to odyssey.com to listen to the podcast and see all of my YouTube videos as well. Just watching videos will produce cryptocurrency for the creator and yourself. And since Odyssey is always monetized and never censored, you'll have no problem seeing all the videos from your favorite creators. You can also use the library credits you created Odyssey to tip creators and even purchase paid content. Earn library credits through various rewards, including daily view rewards and the number of shares and invites. And you can interact with creators in all sorts of ways, including like and dislike, comment, boost a post by supporting it, repost it, and share to other sites, all while earning crypto for the creator. Easily monetize yourself and your favorite creators using cryptocurrency without advertising. Use the link below to visit this channel on odyssey.com and see many of your other favorites there as well. Of course, people using high-tech gizmos to scam people is nothing new. Consider Scientology. Failed science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard got rich duping thousands of people into believing that a badly written sci-fi story was a religion and the basis of it was a gadget called an E-meter, which is supposed to measure your level of thetans. Don't worry about what those are, since they don't actually exist, it's pretty irrelevant. Turns out, the E-meter is just an ohm-meter. It measures galvanic skin response. It's one of the things a polygraph measures. Its workings are hardly secret, except that Scientology needs to do its best to stop people from knowing that. Obviously, compared to a polygraph, they realize they didn't need the drama of a bunch of different meters in one to get people to reveal potentially incriminating things to them when they give you the so-called test. Just the ohm meter. They can use the digits and meters to spin bogosity about your thetan levels and how you absolutely need Scientology to deal with them, while at the same time making you feel special because so few people did as well on the test as you. In the meantime, your answers to the questions give them lots of stuff they can potentially use against you. And we've seen how this borderline criminal organization is ready to do just that. Now, they've crossed paths with Right to Repair. We've covered at length how bad the DMCA is, especially Section 1201, which makes it illegal to circumvent a technological measure. In other words, it stops you from using your own property which you legally purchased. It isn't just about copying DVDs or downloading YouTube videos or any of the other things we've covered. It's also been used for things like stopping the repair and modification of medical devices. Section 1201 specifies a triennial review process where, every three years, anyone can apply to the Librarian of Congress for an exemption. 2024 will be one such year. Things took a turn for the better back in 2012 after the Librarian of Congress created a veritable train wreck by not renewing the exemption against jailbreaking phones. So now, the default is to allow an exemption to be renewed unless a case is made against it. So there's always a lot of lobbying against exemptions, like the medical device makers suing the Library of Congress to deny the exemption which allows people to get their own data out of medical devices. You even have the continued opposition from the DVD Copy Control Association, who are still trying to close that barn door long after the horse has left, met another horse out in the wild, raised a family, and died of old age. 
So the L. Ron Hubbard estate is getting into it for the first time to prevent people from taking apart their e-meters and figuring out that, yeah, it's a pretty darn big scam. Not only is it easily detectable as a simple ohm meter, it's also obvious that they're charging $5,000 for about $200 worth of components. Their excuse is that purchasing the e-meter involves, quote, not a unilateral shrink wrap license, but rather is negotiated and agreed to in advance of the purchase of the device. Such agreements may impose restrictions on transfer and use of the device itself, as well as restrictions on the use of the controlling software. In many cases, such restrictions are essential to ensuring the safe and proper use of the device, which is essential for the device manufacturer to maintain its reputation and goodwill. Because you need special training to fiddle a dial and pretend it means something. Also, ohm meters are dangerous, apparently. And the only threat to its reputation and goodwill is the prospect of everyone seeing clearly what a scam it really is. If you're on the Wi-Fi in the coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government sensors. It's essential in this day and age. So go to vpn.pagosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world. And they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. And now it's time to sublimate this week's biggest bogan emitter. What's crazier than Florida man? How about Florida prison? In this case, Avon Park Correctional Institution. Prisons generally go out of their way to bully and impede the rights of inmates. They censor books and magazines all over the place. Anything of a sexual nature, anything remotely criminal, and anything written by writers like George Orwell, Franz Kafka, and Albert Camus. A lot of them even prohibit limit, or at least discourage legal research, which is every prisoner's right. And now, this Florida prison has prohibited multiple issues of the newspaper Key West Citizen because of a celebrity cipher puzzle on the crossword page, along with Sudoku and the horoscopes. Okay, they're probably better off without the horoscopes. But they're censoring the entire newspaper because of this puzzle, in which the reader decodes a celebrity quote encoded with a simple Caesar cipher. It's done under the color of a Florida Department of Corrections rule prohibiting publications written in code, which is meant to prevent prisoners from engaging in secret communications with criminals on the outside. The Florida Press Association sent a letter to the Literature Review Committee saying, quote, the puzzles are created for the reading public to solve for their own entertainment. They do not contain any hidden messages for inmates, nor is there any evidence that they teach ways to code messages for secret communications by inmates. Further, broadly interpreting the puzzle this way apparently makes the entire newspaper off-limits, which seems overly punitive. We believe the impoundment action infringes upon the First Amendment rights of both the newspaper's publisher and its incarcerated subscribers. The U.S. Supreme Court's test that there be a rational connection to safety and security has not been met. Rather, the decision appears to be arbitrary and irrational. The ACLU also sent a letter saying, quote, This is the third time in less than a year that the ACLU Foundation and the ACLU of Florida have contacted you regarding the improper impoundment and confiscation of publications. The decision to ban the entire issue of the newspaper due to this one puzzle game is so overly broad and arbitrary as to be standardless. This ban on the Key West citizen violates the First Amendment and does nothing to protect the safe and secure operation of Florida's correctional facilities. 
The banning of a particular publication represents content-based censorship, and it is unlawful without a showing that the prohibition is reasonably related to legitimate penological interests and the censored material in fact implicates legitimate security concerns. If the First Amendment doesn't apply to newspapers, then what the hell does it apply to? If they can censor this, they can censor anything and everything, completely violating the law and their oaths of office. Literally, the prison is being run by criminals. So all of that makes Savon Park Correctional Institution this week's biggest Bogani matter. Do you have children, or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling, or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins, and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain, or regulations passed in the name of safety, and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. And now let's look at the second Silver Clue on Award winner for 2023. And did you ever think it would go to a Reddit user? But Cool Disco Dan posted an awesome bit of activism people can do about the ridiculous and unconstitutional age verification laws several states are passing, in this case, Virginia. He posted the link where people can file complaints to the Virginia Office of the Attorney General to report websites that are failing to do proper age verification before accessing pornographic materials. And what site does he want people to report? Bible.com. I mean, seriously, have you read the Bible? There's some really racy stuff in there. He uses as an example Ezekiel chapter 23, which starts off mentioning a couple of underage prostitutes in Egypt and how men fondled and caressed their breasts. Ezekiel married both of them. At the same time, one man, one woman, my ass, menage a trois for the win. One of them kept being a prostitute, and apparently for some pretty high flyers. So Ezekiel handed her over to a mob to be stripped naked and murdered in front of everybody. So her even younger sister decides to follow in her footsteps. This is where we get to verses 20 and 21 that Cool Disco Dan quoted. She lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, and whose semen was like that of horses. So she longed to do the sinful things she did when she was young in Egypt, when young men caressed and fondled her breasts. Seriously, there's a lot of caressing and fondling your breasts. I think old Zeke had a fixation. So here's what God says to her. You will drink from your sister's cup, a cup that is deep and wide. You will be scorned and mocked, because this cup holds so much. The cup of your sister Samaria will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow. You will drink from it and drain it. You will break it into pieces and tear your breasts off your body. I have spoken, declares the Almighty Lord. Then God says to Zeke, Bring together a mob against them. Hand them over to terror and looting. Then the mob will stone them and kill them with swords. The mob will kill their sons and daughters and burn their homes. So I will put a stop to the sinning in the land, and all the women will be warned not to sin as they do. They will be punished for their sins, and they will pay for their sin of idolatry. Then they will know that I am the Almighty Lord. Funny how this passage is never depicted in any of those Bible movies they make. Funny also how all those breast-fondling men escaped punishment entirely. Takes two to tango, you know. Cool Disco Dan wrote, This pornographic material can also be accessed unfettered on BibleGateway.com, BibleStudyTools.com, 
BibleHub.com, Biblia.com, KingJamesBibleOnline.com, and Christianity.com. Of course, this is far from the only passage. People in the comments recommended other verses like in Song of Songs. Solomon had a lot to sing about. And a ton of others, too, like Lot's underage daughter sleeping with him. The Bible is probably like 30% porn or something, what with all the begatting going on. Even more if you include violence. And an honorable mention to Burn Sniper, who's said to report Virginia.gov because the state flag depicts an exposed breast. So, cool Disco Dan, enjoy your shiny new silver clue on, but shh, don't tell the Virginia AG what's printed on it. I want to tell you about the eyeglasses I've been wearing for years. As people can see on my videos, I have a very strong prescription, which makes glasses more expensive, especially when I need computer glasses, reading glasses, prescription sunglasses, and most expensively, progressive lenses for general everyday wear. To save money while still getting quality glasses, I get them from Fermu. In fact, I just got a pair of progressives with high-index aspherical lenses and a nice pair of frames my wife loves for just over $100. It would have been $500 to get them through my eye doctor. Not only do they look good, the glasses are durable. I've worn many pairs for several years without problems. All orders come with a 30-day return policy, a 3-month warranty, and one-on-one -on -one customer service. Go to Firmu, that's F-I-R-M-O-O dot Bogosity dot TV, anytime you need quality glasses at a low price. Once again, that's Firmu dot Bogosity dot TV. And now let's denaturalize this week's... Idiot Extraordinary! And getting back to what I said earlier about AI, it's really better not to have to learn things the hard way. Like when media company Gannett had to stop using AI to write articles because of how hilariously bad they were. Yeah, it's gonna be a while before AI will take your jobs. They apparently decided to test the AI for reports on high school football because no one cares about high school football. Quote, Westerville North escapes Westerville Central in thin win in Ohio high school football action. The Westerville North Warriors defeated the Western Central Warhawks 21-12 in an Ohio high school football game on Friday. Westerville North edged Westerville Central 21-12 in a close encounter of the athletic kind at Westerville North High on August 18th in Ohio football action. Westerville North opened with a 7-0 advantage over Westerville Central through the first quarter. The Warhawks trimmed the margin to make it 7-6 at halftime. Westerville North jumped to a 21-6 lead heading into the final quarter. The Warriors talked up this decision in spite of the Warhawks' spirited fourth quarter performance. Check out our complete boys football roundup to stay up to date on all the action. Again, there was no kind of checking or, well, editing by an editor, which, ironically, they would have done if it had been written by a human. And that's not even the worst one. Check this one out. Quote, The Worthington Christian, winning team mascot in all quotes double brackets, defeated the Westerville North, losing team mascot all caps double brackets, 2-1 to one in an Ohio boys soccer game on Saturday. On the other hand, there are those who consider this a distinct improvement. Apparently, the only thing Gannett had to say was, quote, This local AI sports effort is being paused. Of course, with all the layoffs, Gannett and other media companies have been trying to use AI to fill in the gaps, sort of like a pacemaker as their obsolete industry goes into critical condition. A pacemaker that fails to work in the most hilarious way possible. So all of that makes Gannett this week's... Idiot Extraordinary! that wraps up this Somebody Else's Life is Flashing Before My Eyes. What the hell is that about? edition of the Bogosity Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go to donate.bogosity.tv for several ways to support and discord.bogosity.tv to join the discussion. Subscribe at Patreon or Subscribestar and you can listen early and ad-free. 
Thank you for listening. Until next time, here's a quote from Judy Bloom. Let children read whatever they want and then talk about it with them. If parents and kids can talk together, we won't have as much censorship because we won't have as much fear. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License.